Research Gantt chart. Every student needs one, but how do we put it together? In this video, I will share a simple template that I've created and walk you through how you'll want to fill it out. Hi, I'm Ken and I teach research at two UK universities and I run a business guiding masters and PhD students on research. In the video description below, you will find a link to the template of a Gantt chart that I created and used for my own PhD and with my other clients. And you will find an example of a PhD level Gantt chart and a master's level Gantt chart as well for your reference. Download this document and I'll walk you through the development. Like and subscribe if you want more free resources and YouTube guides on student research and international student related concerns. Also do share these videos with your friends who are experiencing the same difficulties as well. Firstly, let's start with setting up the time frame. Time frames matter. For full-time PhD students, the university expects your PhD to be completed within three years or four, depending on your program. For master's students, you'll have anywhere from four months to a year for your research study, depending on your dissertation module. For PhD students, you'll want your Gantt chart to be a monthly one so that you can have a broader overview of your research project over three or four years. For master's students, I would do it by weeks because your projects are a lot shorter and your research activities are faster as well. Set up your time frame for your research and change the dates accordingly. At this point, mark out the deadlines that you may have. For PhD students, this will include your yearly review submissions and your PhD thesis submissions and other deadlines that they may have in your school, such as ethics application deadlines. For master's students, you will have your research report or your dissertation submission deadlines, your proposal submissions, etc. Place these dates on your document for now because we'll need them later. This is something that I would encourage PhD students to do specifically the international students who have religious obligations throughout the year that do not match the academic calendar in the UK or wherever you are studying. On your Gantt chart, mark out the dates and periods like fasting months, 15 day Chinese New Year periods, for example. These may affect your productivity, even if you're still working and you need to be more mindful and realistic about what you can achieve so as to not place undue pressure on yourself. International students who have plans to return home for extended periods of time should also mark these out in the chart as well, because that can affect things like data collection periods, etc. If you need to work during your PhD, you also want to mark out periods where your workload may be higher, such as the winter flu season or financial audit season. You should also mark out periods where you need to wind down with your PhD work or generally want to take a short break like over Christmas breaks or when there are school holidays if you have children. The more considerations you make now, the more realistic the scan chart will be. There is no point in developing a Gantt chart with targets that cannot be met right at the start. While it may not be appropriate for you to have all of these details when you send it off for formal applications like ethics application, proposals, yearly reviews, you can include them now, keep this in-depth version for yourself and your supervisor, and it will be very easy for you to take them out and tidy these up later. Research processes differ from students to students, but I've included some examples for some different research structures for you to have a look at. For your research activities, you will want to have them in chronological order for clarity. Typically, you will have four key phases, phase one, literature review, phase two, research designing, phase three, data collection, phase four, data analysis. Here you will see the typical time frame for each of these four masters and PhD students. Note that this is a guide for you. You will need to discuss these with your supervisor as well. Phase one is typically for you to decide your research topic. It will involve searching literature, selecting literature, reading, analysis of literature. You may have more steps if you're doing a systematic review or a scoping review as well. It would be helpful for you to include the steps of your review so that it's clear. Phase two is research designing. You have activities like developing research questions, aims and objectives, deciding research methodology and methods, developing proposal, requesting for gatekeeper permissions, and preparing and submitting for ethics applications. Phase three is your data collection phase. This is where a lot of research studies will start to differ depending on your research design. For most students, you will need to consider participant recruitment, data collection chiefly, and this can be far more complex if you have multiple data sets or sample groups, so do include that in your research Gantt chart as well. Qualitative students may have added steps like translation of interviews, transcription of interviews, member checking, for example. 
quantitative study students, you may have your data processing and your data cleaning to consider as well. Phase four is your data analysis. This again will depend on your data analysis method. Qualitative research students, you have your six steps for Braun and Clark's thematic analysis, four steps for constructivist grounded theory coding. Quantitative research students include the various statistical tests that you'll be doing. You will also want to include some post-analysis steps like developing discussion topics as well. Note that at this point, the amount of details you can include here is very dependent on where you are in your research journey. Very early on, you may not know what your data collection steps or data analysis steps may look like, so it's okay if you just mark out vague timeframes to show how you think the time will be spent. However, if you're developing your Gantt chart for your research proposal submissions or ethics application, you would pretty much need to have everything thought out. What about the writing process, you may ask? I always tell my students to leave writing as its own section in the Gantt chart because when it is mixed with the research process, it can be very hard to keep track of what is written and when you should be writing. I usually break this down into chapters for a thesis or a dissertation. You have your usual list of chapters, introduction, background, literature review, methods, findings or results, discussions, and then your conclusions. However, when it comes to writing a thesis or dissertation, you will skip the introduction and write it at the end with the conclusion because they are very similar. And you need to know what your research looked like to be able to introduce it effectively. When it comes to time, you need to consider your own writing speed. If you have done academic writing before, think about how long it takes for you to write a 1,000 word document non-stop. As a guide, this is how an 80,000 words, 50,000 words, 20,000 words, 10,000 words thesis or dissertation looks like in terms of word count. And once you have your per 1,000 word speed, input this into the word count calculator in the front of the Gantt chart document. This will give you a rough guide of the time needed for writing in terms of hours. Here we are talking about hardcore non-stop writing. So no breaks, no toilet breaks, no time to run to a cupboard for a snack. You need to think about how many hours you can write like that in one day. And there you have the number of days it will take to write those chapters. Naturally, your chapters will not always follow this guide. You can always change the number of words and it will give you a more accurate indication. So let's say I take two hours to write 1000 words non-stop on a good writing day, I will input my speed here and say I only realistically can write like that for four hours in a day, I will get this. Now, after factoring the time for planning the chapters and editing, I can input this in my Gantt chart. Writing should be done throughout the research, especially when it's a document that is above 10,000 words. It is very hard to write anything larger within one writing period because you can burn out, get distracted, and generally it is very miserable as an experience. It is wise to keep writing while research to save time and also have something else to focus on when you need a break from the data collection, for example. Your literature review and background can be written while the literature review is still underway and should continue through your research planning stage. While you are planning your research, you are likely be busy with writing other documents like your proposal and ethics application so you can focus on that in the meantime. When you're data collecting, you'll want to focus on your methods chapters. Depending on your data collection schedule, you may not have time to write as well, but your data collection is priority. While you analyze, you can still be writing your methods chapter as well. After the analysis phase, you pretty much have non-stop writing ahead of you. So that's where you would do your findings, results, and your discussions. After the discussions chapter, you'll want to return back to your literature review to see if it needs more updating. Then finally, your introduction and conclusion chapters will be written. With all of these things then you'll have your first thesis or dissertation draft sorted so you can start planning your editing and revisions. On your Gantt chart you will also want to mark out dates for supervisors to feed back on your drafts. Don't forget to set aside time for proofreading and other formatting as well. Other writing tasks that you'll want to include are your PhD annual review submissions, ethics applications for example. Where possible and depending on your university requirements, you should not be writing a fresh document for your annual reviews. Instead, you should just be cutting out whatever that you've already written, tidy it up for reviewing so that it makes sense to them, and then send it off. Normally, the university's expectations will match your PhD expected progress, i.e. they will want to see your literature review in year one, 
methods in year two and results in year three. Research is also not only about research activities and writing, for PhD students especially. There are also other activities that you'll want to plan out as well, such as your research skills training, conference attendance and publications. Sometimes your supervisors will want these planned out in a Gantt chart too, and it's also a good exercise for you to learn to prioritize your skills training alongside your research activities and writing commitments. You don't have to train every research skill at the same time because you're likely to forget things as well with so much going on. So take the time to plan when is it the best for you to do those training. The research Gantt chart is a living document that you will need to review and update over the lifespan of your research. As you progress, you will have a better sense of time and priorities, and so it's important to update it with the latest information that you have. There is nothing more devastating than thinking that you are constantly behind time according to a Gantt chart that was developed three years ago and has never ever been updated. Earlier, I discussed marking out dates where you may be less focused or less productive in your PhD due to Christmas or the fasting months, etc. Take these into account when you plan your research and writing especially and be realistic in planning how long things will take. There are two versions that you'll want to keep. A copy with only research and writing activities and a full-size Gantt chart with personal holidays, training, and any additional matters you may be concerned with. It is your personal version that you will not need to show anyone else, so you need to be honest with yourself in terms of your time and commitment. A research project is not something where you can sit around and wait for things to happen. Often there is no structure for you and it's very overwhelming for masters and PhD students who come from practice or work experiences, or come from a BSc or a master's taught program. The Gantt chart is an important way for you to manage your time. I've seen students who get swept away by personal commitments and the lack of motivation and then eventually fall off the course completely, so be very, very careful. At this stage, you may be nearer the start of your research. I've got a few videos for you to get started with your research and avoid common research mistakes, so click over here and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye!